right. It's arrived. The uh, artist edition, Todd McFarlane. I'm going to go ahead and open this up right here. Did a little bit of adjusting with my cameras up here, so I don't know if it's even enough room. This thing's pretty big. So. Um, Pre-orders on these have been open for months, and I know it's just now hitting. I have no idea what kind of uh, print run IDW does on these. I know a lot of them, when they sell out, you can't find them again for a while. The, uh, the Jim Lee one is weirdly easy to find at sale pricing right now, so hopefully that's not the case with this one uh, later on. So. Alright. Yeah, I don't imagine this one not being probably one of their best-selling ones. <clears throat> if not the best-selling one. So, uh... Here we go. So you got the box. Got a little image here of the uh, the cover piece to it. It's the uh, Spidey 316. I think it is. Pretty sure it's 316 the cover. Uh, eh, try not to slice my throat here. It's a big book. Very big. So there's that. Nice little, nice little surprise. So you got the, um, yeah, the front cover there, and then the, uh, I feel like this is a panel from, uh, I don't even know what it would be, like 311, maybe? If not, it's an original sketch. So you, there's that, and uh, for comparison, Uh, just for comparison, so you can see, so here's the size of the book, uh, full bleed, it's got about a quarter inch on each edge, okay, so deduct about 0.5 from it, um, this is an 11, 11 by 17 original of mine, okay, this is an original art piece, so I'm going to make it flush with the spine, and here, and you can see, the book's big, so this paper is 11 by 17, I don't even know what, uh, 14, 16 by 20, something like that. So anyways, it's oversized, just so you know. Big book. And, uh, <laughs> it's going to be tricky. Might only get to see one side of this thing, because uh, the way that my desk is set up here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip this around, try not to cut off my finger. But yeah, uh, man, I can only imagine if if this book came out when I was in like junior high school. I don't even know. I don't even know. So excited that it's out now, though. I'm taking this plastic off before, or otherwise it's gonna be a mess. Yeah, uh, these things ship this week. Uh, but like I said, like pre-orders, they've been open since, uh, what, like last year? I think last year is when they started putting up the first solicitations for them. Yeah, you might not get a full view of this, but uh going to do what I can. So let me go ahead and flip this. There we go. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're not getting the whole thing here. Uh, how can I fix this? Let's see. Possibly. Well, no, I can't turn that. All right. So I'm just gonna kind of. I'm just gonna kind of do this, and then uh, we'll see what we'll see what occurs. Um, I actually moved my entire camera onto my desk. That's why I shaky cam because uh, the size of this thing. So. I don't think I can actually go higher. Let's try here. If I can, it'd be awesome. If not, it's fine. Yeah, that's about as tall as it's going to go. Okay. So. Okay. 
Okay, and hopefully this thing just doesn't crash and burn on me. There we are. So, anyways, about best I can get it right there. Uh, I don't think the interior pages are glossy, so try to get a decent view of this. Um, let's turn that one a bit. All right, so here we go. So here's a, uh, and of course I can't clear that. Why would I? We'll clear it now. No, just barely. All right, uh, interior front cover piece. You got a uh, cool little view here. It's the what was this from? Must have been from the the crossover issue, the Spidey Hulk issue. Uh, what was it three twenty eight? So awesome to see this in person. So you can see where Todd used. Um, I don't even know which brand he was using at the time. He kind of jump around. Uh, sometimes you would see things like this where it would just essentially be not like pro black, but um, you know whatever whatever dipping ink was available. Uh, some of these ones as well, they have kind of a, because of the aging process, they have like kind of a sepia tone to them. And I'd mentioned that in some of my other videos where artists will use uh, things like Sharpie markers and things like that. And, uh, now they don't stand the test of time. All right. So you got a little bit of an index here. I'm not gonna worry about this. I'm gonna make this a short one. Uh, you probably already decided whether or not you're going to buy this. I just really wanted to show it off. So uh, I've got some, uh, uh, black suit Spidey originals here. Um, man, these things are cut all to hell. It's crazy to see these edges here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, some of that could have been from the the printer uh, for stat stat purposes. So they would cut the edge so it would fit uh, to shoot it, and then you would have the other plates made based on the the color guides for the uh, specific color areas. But um, I think it's 298 here, isn't it? Oh, 299. Yeah, so very, very interesting. Uh, he's got a, a little bit of a photo paste up here on some of these pages. Yeah, a lot of these are, like I said, it's crazy to see these things in person for the first time. Yeah, that old Marvel paper, a lot of... Uh, A lot of yellowing, a lot of yellowing on the originals. Um, to call them off-white would be generous. So uh, you can see there was like a balloon or something going on here that was completely uh, whited out and then a little bit of uh, ink work over top of it. Well, yeah, to me, this, this right here, uh, this was me kind of figuring out at a young age. Um grade school level that uh, comics are something I really really wanted to pursue yeah this stuff's incredible I, I yeah McFarlane's early work um, still bummed out still bummed out you know 20 some odd years after the fact that he quit completely drawing and inking his own work on spawn um, because of the impact that this you know specific run of, run of books uh, made on a young impressionable wannabe and he's starting to get a little bit of that craziness the crazy uh, McFarlane poses okay so that back cover piece was from 309 page 4 um, might have been an inferno issue I'm not really sure I'm not entirely sure. Uh, most of these books kind of blend together. There was only one or two issues that kind of, to me personally, um, didn't really fit the series. Uh, be uh, what was it? The Christmas issue with you know uh, Spidey getting kicked out of like a department store and Santa's on the street, uh, you know, collecting change. And uh, what was the other one? Maybe the Humbug issue. I don't know. There's a couple that they just didn't really fit that run specific run of books they just felt like fillers um this here very reminiscent of action comics one i've always uh, felt that back in the day too but yes yeah, so you get to see um i'm kind of looking here i feel like maybe around here so what book would this be 
see and it's trim so you can't actually see well you can't see on the video anyways but um the 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 info on the top is trimmed and cut um, I'll pull down base so you can see so it's uh, trimmed and cut and these like notches are cut into it and stuff so I'm assuming this is the actual full page that still exists or there's like a trim a divot cut going down and then across and most of these have that so it must be a uh, uh, whichever printer probably Quebecore um, I worked at Quebecore for a very long time um, and I know sometimes they would require photo stats on a uh, uh, house ads and they probably treated each page of this as like a house ad per se um, so they'd have to actually shoot it uh, do the film oh that's nice whoever owns this page you got a toddy sig and the david michelini uh, border <laughs> uh, todd wants you to know down here uh, you can't see that it says uh, thick Thick border, yeah. Man, this is a big book. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump through this. I'll skip a few pages here and there. I'm just gonna take a peek. Again, if you if you already uh, grabbed this thing, I just skipped a big load of pages there. By the way, um, yeah. If you already chose to grab this thing, uh, congrats. Uh, if not, if you are a fan of Todd, um, what are you even doing with your life? Get this thing right now. Um, what was the Amazon 135? right now the pre-orders were actually cheaper so it's a very cool pose right there love it yeah weirdly uh, <laughs> it's like 80s very 80s MJ yeah and all the wonkiness this stuff just works like this right here would never work kind of in my traditional style I work with now it would just look offset but uh, because of Todd's style, he's got a little bit of a push and pull, kind of cartoony, uh, got a cartoony aspect to it, even like the wide set eyes and some of the uh, uh, forced perspective stuff. Um, it just, it works really well. Um, okay, this is what I was actually looking for here. Um, this must have been around the time, so issue 322, I think it was before this though. Um, McFarlane, actually even here you can see it's written in blue. Uh, he was using like uh, uh, blue line pencils essentially as a finished pencil so you'd lay them out in blue do get a little bit tighter and then essentially go in with the ink and while he's inking he, his rendering was like the final rendering that wasn't necessarily there uh, in any pencil form and I've always found that um, pretty interesting but I know um, that might be one of the reasons why a lot of us um, are attracted to this specific run of books too it gives it a little more of a kinetic feel, um, a more natural approach feel, like not not everything is planned. Um, and even here you can see, uh, maybe you can't see so much because my lighting, but uh, it looks like he wasn't really uh, dead set on uh, Captain America's skull, the way he was doing it. Like the, the eye, the eye uh, his brow was pushed, bumped out a lot more on this one here. Um, yeah, and even his notes and blue lines still exist here, cap and all that. So, and yes, I'm focusing mainly here because this book is huge, and my shoulders are about here to here on this book. This book's giant, awesome. I just skipped about 20 pages there, guys. Yeah, this stuff's great. Yeah, so after I'm done with this, I'm gonna enjoy this book a little bit and go through it and check it out. Um, all right, Spider-Man number four. So the the Spidey, and I'm I'm not sure exactly. I did not look at the index. I don't know how much of this is like actually um, originals, uh, somewhat paginated by release. Um, so I mean, there might be more amazing stuff coming up later on. Awesome, Wendigo. These issues here too. Um, I'm interested to see. There were uh, pages inked by. Um, I know that Scott Williams had inked a few pages in, in one of the books to help out. Uh, there's a Wolverine splash specifically that I'm thinking of. And I was like, even even being younger, I was like, yeah, this thing is way too tight to be Todd's inks. Like, uh, Todd's, Todd, he's not capable of a, a completely technical style. There's always going to be some, uh, some wonkiness to it. 
and uh, the page was like immaculate. It was like, let's take Todd and turn him into a technical artist, essentially. It's kind of what it felt like. So, should be pretty easy to spot, too. Yeah, they would have been around here. It was like the, the, these issues here that have Wolverine in it, so it would have been in here. Um, also, good job, good job uh, with the paper here. Um, this feels a little better. It might be the same. It feels a little better than the, the Max Artist Edition. Um, yeah, so these ones here were... Oh, I didn't know this one. Actually, you can kind of tell from the legs. Um, these two here were actually inked by Rob Liefeld. I don't remember if they had given credits in the books either. Here it is. Okay, see, I'm not a liar. Uh, so, if I can move this a bit. Uh, Scott Williams signed this original and Todd. So here's a Scott Williams page here. Uh, this one says just Todd. I do believe it's just Todd. Williams would have controlled this sh uh, fade a little more. Uh, more Todd. But yeah, if that one splashes in here, it's Wolverine without the mask. The one that uh, is kind of burned into my brain. Yeah, and I don't see it. Uh, this one here on the splash, so and this is something I never noticed as a kid. Uh, inks, it says uh, uh, Magyar and McFarlane. Magyar. So apparently, maybe he had an assistant. Maybe he had a background assistant because I know he was he was still cranking stuff out. I don't know if that's a moniker for somebody or a group or if it's just. Uh... Yes, this stuff's awesome. All right, so I did manage to find one page inked by Scott Williams, so I'm happy about that. Uh, this is interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna bookmark this one here. Let's bookmark that one. Um, and then so we got some covers here. Uh, if I do find it, I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna show you why. I'll use my phone. Yeah. So you got the original covers here. Uh, what is this is 299. Surprisingly, he doesn't have the 298 cover in here. Um, I do know the 298. I saw on one of Todd's uh, Facebook stories. He had gifted it to uh, who is it? His dad. And then his dad cut it down to the actual border. Like he cut all the trim off. So the, the page would fit like a specific frame that he purchased for it. Then you got the three, uh, 300 and 301 here. Okay, let's see, 311. Uh, you got some stuff here. This was a, this was a great issue. Um, gone through several copies of that book. Very popular. I did an homage to this cover as well. Of course, Spidey one. Didn't homage that several times. Here it is. Okay, so check this out. So Marvel Age number 90. Uh, this is the cover that he did right here. Uh, had someone call me crazy about this. And I said, no, I'm not crazy. Um, so sometimes artists will reuse a really great layout because they're like, you know what? This should be a cover even though it's a splash. And so essentially what Todd did was he reused his pose uh, for this Marvel Age cover, and it's this panel right here. So you got this, the Black Spidey um, right here. And this was just my artistic eye kind of catching it because I have like this entire uh, area of my brain dedicated to the artwork of Todd McFarlane. So uh, when I saw this, I was like, wait, I, that's crazy. Like I thought maybe they just sort of repurposed this and maybe had someone else do, but it's Todd, you know. So I was like, okay. I guess, you know, even the webbing, the webbing has even got the same energy from like this hand coming out. Well, this hand coming out, he flipped the, he flipped the wrist on it. Uh, but the muscle, what's funny enough though, is these muscles should have twisted as well. He, he kept the muscle grouping the same. Uh, but yeah. And then this one here has got an inset twist of the wrist and this here, he's got it just uh, straightened out. Um, yeah. But anyways, uh, one or the other, one or the other happened. So either this came first or this came first. It is possible this one was printed first and then he just repurposed this for a splash. And uh, being that these are scanned from originals, you can see that the scale, like even of the foot, is like, that's just a straight, it's a straight light box, which is fine. If I was Todd, I would probably swipe all my stuff over and over again as well.
But I'm not Todd, so I just swipe Todd over and over again. <laughs> um, I don't swipe. I do homages to the McFarlane covers. Um, yeah, but interior-wise, I don't even I don't even like uh, attempt it. You know, I feel like there's uh, something special about his work that I could never personally uh, replicate or uh, feel comfortable tr attempting to replicate. He's a very, very unique, very new unique look to his work. Uh, yeah, this cover, man, so much wasted space on this thing. I know that I know that this is super iconic, but this this hurts me. This right here hurts me every time I see it. Uh, but it is pretty epic. I mean, a lot of people have homaged this. I've, I've, I've done homage covers to this several times. Uh, Joe Quesada, Diodato. Um, this is always a fun cover, too. This should, this, this was worth, this actually could have worked uh, because of the facing Todd uh, has a, against Juggernaut. This could have worked for that sideways issue, to be honest. Um, okay, um, so I skipped, uh, I don't know, 150, 200 pages here. You guys didn't get to see all those, right? So, uh, yeah, even if it was just what I had shown, um, you know, this book would totally be of value even if at half of its size. Easily, easily. Um, yeah, so, yeah, if you're a fan of early Todd, uh, most of this looks like it's actually amazing until you hit... Let me see here. Um, I'm going to try to guesstimate this for you. Let's see here. So this would be the Spider-Man series here. Okay, they actually do have an index here showing that becomes Spider-Man. So this would be the last ASM. So 328. Um, I'll close this entire book. Very difficult to do. Um, that's not too bad. I would say uh, maybe two thirds of it is ASM, and then regular Spider-Man. Uh, you know, for the last uh, t the last third of the book, um, not counting all the the cover and the pinup stuff. So, uh, yeah, again, if you're a fan of Todd, um, grab this. It's huge. It's fun, uh, and hopefully inspiring. All right, thanks for watching.